Costos. Keep it locked here for more throughout the day. Must be 21. Playable in Michigan. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-270-7117. It's August 2021. I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. You may or may not know that mortgage interest rates have hit a five-month low. This is your second chance to refinance. Call Hall Financial right now at 248-308-5000 and ask about our eight-day ready-to-close no appraisal necessary loan. That's 248-308-5000 or you can chat with us online right now at callhallfirst.com. All Financial, NMLS ID 1467435, equal housing lender. We're all on this planet together. So join Odyssey and find your one thing. Improve your gas mileage by properly inflating tires and taking your car in for a tune-up. What's your one thing? One thing is brought to you by GFL Environmental. Green for life. At Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public. So we decided to sing about it. Second note throw home. Robbie Grossman scores standing up. Tiger swings getting better and better. Then back to a two run lead, three to one here in the third. Well, that was part of that uh, third inning. And for the Detroit Tigers, it was a four run third inning, leading to a 9 4 win over the Baltimore Orioles, the first of a three game series. They will take on the Orioles in Baltimore again tonight. Derek Skubal will take the mound for the Tigers. Matt Harvey for the Baltimore Orioles. That game will begin at 7.05. Uh, on Monday, we had the opportunity to hear from Dan Campbell, and he mentioned that the starters were going to play the first quarter. Now, I know you guys touched on this a little bit yesterday. Yeah, but let's not do it any justice unless John Jansen weighs in. And, oh. Yes, and, and so I do want to weigh in on a little bit. And if you want to weigh in on it, if you're on your way into work, if you're listening this morning, 248-539-9797. It's the same number as the ticket text. Give us a call. Um, I think this is, that's one, it's a great statement because going into the game, the players have an expectation. They know that they're going to be playing throughout the first quarter, and this is a new offense, it's a new defense, new quarterback, new components on the offensive line, new wide receivers. You're going to see a lot of different things going on defense. You've got two guys, Trey Flowers and Romeo Aguara, playing two completely different positions, and it is different when you're at game speed. Now, there are three different speeds in the NFL. There's a fourth one, but I don't know 
what that is. I don't know what it looks like. And the first beat is is preseason games. All right, and that and, and that is. You know what? It's better than it is at practice. It's live. It's a chance to go through and, and find your rhythm, understand, you know, and get back to where you were if you're a veteran Starting last year. And then you have the regular season three, no drive. And ratchets up and down. And then if you get in the chance to go to the playoffs, it is, and I'm telling you this, I played against Detroit my rookie year, and Robert Boucher in the Silverdome on that short turf, he was fast. Let me tell you what. He <laughs> was getting after it. That was a long 60 minutes. Uh, but then we played Detroit in my first first year, my rookie year, in the playoffs. And we were on grass uh, out in Washington at FedEx Field, and it was a completely different speed. I was anticipating that because it was on grass, it was going to be a little bit different. I would have, you know, and, and I was you know, 16 games into it. I was a little more experienced. He cut across my face one time, and I had it was a blur. I had no idea where he was, what he was doing, where he was going, and it's completely different. And I say those different ones. And the, the fourth one, at Super Bowl speed, I never had the chance to experience that speed. So that's I, I've got to believe that that is a completely different level. But every time you go, there's a different speed. There's a game speed, and when you play in preseason, it's different than practice. And when you have all of these new components especially when you have a new quarterback with the cadence in the huddle. What's it going to sound like? Plus, this year, and, and, and it's going to be different than it was last year, there's going to be fans in the stands. Now, maybe there's a lot, maybe there's a little. I don't, you know, in preseason, it's not going to be a huge factor, right? It's not, they're not going to be uh, rowdy down at Ford Field. For, I don't know, Dan Campbell's telling him, pour gasoline on the fire. <laughs> yes, he's, he's getting them high. Stay in the left um, lane. But it's, it, you know, all of those components you have to work into you have to get used to no matter how long you've been in the nfl now i do think that there's going to be certain individuals like michael brockers we i don't know that we're going to see him the entire first quarter he's a 10-year vet he's he's played this game a long time we're going to see him at the beginning but there are certain individuals that are going to have a different let's just say pinch count than other individuals in that first quarter. Well, that would be my question to you is the elephant in the room. You talk about the, the benefits of playing in the preseason, the injury risk. It's a, to go out there in a vanilla scheme, right? Nobody's showing their best stuff. You're going to go out there and just go through the basics. Is there a risk there playing the veteran guys, the guys you're counting on, beyond the series, beyond two series? Because we saw last year no preseason at all. College football every year somehow gets by without doing the tune-up games. Well... It depends how you rank some of those early well, season Clemson, games. Georgia's week one. Wisconsin, Penn State's week one. This I, I get somehow that. John, somehow there's, they're going to play football without preseason. Right, I don't know how they're, they're going to do it. And I'm there's not sure. some of those, but you also have, and, and I know people are going to hit me up with this, <laughs> you, in, in, you know, reputation, you've got Michigan and Western Michigan. Now, I know the quarterback at Western Michigan may be the best in the MAC. And all the, I, I get that, but that is the type of game, That's a preseason that, game yeah. that you would say is a preseason game. And yes, they play Washington week two, so you're right into it. Right. But you know, it's not every you know, power five team opens up Georgia, Alabama, or anything like that. John, I, I would tell you, if the Lions had some real established guys you couldn't afford to have injured, I would feel differently about them playing the full quarter. I think the reality is this is a football team that's got a lot to prove. And well, they, they don't have a lot of established superstar guys who you go, if he gets injured, our season's over. So I think at that point, you just lean on culture. You lean on trying to ramp this thing up for the season. I, ordinarily, I don't love seeing my starters play extended in the preseason, but I think it may be a different story with this Lions team. Well, and, and the, the kind of the wrinkle this year is that there's only three preseason games. So normally, if you've got four in that first one, yeah, I'm okay with you. I'm not playing the starters other than maybe the first series, if at all. Yeah, how, would you, how, would you do the three? how would you do the three if you were? If I was Dan Campbell, and, and he mentioned this when he was on with, with us last week. Rieger was in on Wednesday, um, and, we, and we had him. You can't play Jared Goff without playing, you know, Taylor Decker and Frank Ragnow in that starting offensive line. So if you want to see him, you've got to see that offensive line as well. And I would say if if there's a player that you don't want to get hurt, it's Frank Ragnow. So how do you not play you him? balance that because then everybody else is going to be put in a compromising position if you don't have those guys up front. I, exactly. And, you know, most of those offensive linemen, while, you know, we, we, we do want to say we want to be smart, we want to make sure... When you tee up that, that game, you get things going, and yeah, you want to be out there playing. And if it was me, 
I would start, I would have the starters play the first quarter. In the second preseason game, depending on how they look, now it would be a fluid situation, but I would want to play them at least into the second quarter, maybe up to halftime. And then in the third preseason game, they don't play at all. They don't, they don't take the field, they don't dress. Now, you, you may want them on the sidelines and their pads and a helmet, but you hide that helmet, I mean, uh, the pads and a, and a ball cap, but you hide the helmet, you make sure that there's no way a select couple of individuals ever play in that game. Because you also have a limited opportunity of seeing or what's the depth on this team going to be. And one of the things that I loved about Marty Schottenheimer was he would tell guys, you know what, you're not going to make this team. You don't fit what we want to do. I think there's a place for you in the NFL. So in the preseason, I'm going to make sure in those preseason games you're out there, you're going to get reps, you're going to be seen by 31 other teams. And I'm going to do everything I can to make some phone calls to find a place for you because I think you belong in the NFL. That is where I think we are losing opportunities is the guys that were undrafted and they only have three games to prove that they belong in the NFL, whether it's for the Detroit Lions or anywhere else. That's where I, you know, that third preseason game is going to be so important is for those guys that are going to be the, you know, the 50th or the 51st, 52nd guy on the roster, whether it's here or other places, of getting those opportunities because in practice, and we saw it with Dan Campbell last week, they have a couple of days of pads, all of a sudden you get, you know, uh, you, you get your middle linebacker dinged up, and you, you know you, you get a guy that's got an injury on on offense. Maybe it's a hamstring. Brockers was out a, a little bit last week. Then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? We're going to go in shells, or we're going to just go for a walk. We're going to put ball caps on again. How do those guys that are trying to make a roster or even make the practice squad? How do they make a name for themselves? How do they get seen? Because practice film will be shared. Uh, amongst the NFL teams for those guys that, that are looking for an opportunity. You say shells, that's just, just the shoulder pads and your shorts underneath. Yeah, or, or they even have this, you know, the, the cushioning that's underneath the, the actual pads of your shoulder pads. They have shells that are just those. So they cover up your shoulders. So if somebody, you know, a helmet runs into your shoulder inadvertently, you don't get a, you know, you don't get an injury. So that's what I mean by shells. I got a question for you. We get back because you got preseason as one way to get ready for the regular season. And then you got some of these teams that do the crossover scrimmages. And I don't know if you did any of those when you played, but I'm curious how you feel about teams like the Rams who leaned heavily on that, saying we're not going to play our starting quarterback here in preseason. But I do want them out there game situation still. So that might be something to kind of explore. Yes, we will. We'll explore that. We want you in the conversation as well. 248-539-9797. How much do you think these starters should play? And uh, how, how would you rank the risk of injury? In a, in a first of three preseason games. We'll get to that next, 97-1, the ticket. Hey, baseball is going to return to its roots on August 12th mile. when the New York, Turn left onto uh, Northwestern Highway. New York Yankees take on the Chicago White Sox in the cornfields of Iowa. Make the most out of the historic game with FanDuel Sportsbook with $5 field of dingers. Just bet $25 on a same-game parlay with at least three legs to unlock the $5 bonus for every home run hit during the game. So lock in your parlay and be part of history on August the 12th. Take a look at the app because you can bet on home runs, you can bet on pitchers, you can bet on you can bet on so many things. And I've learned so much about it just by looking at the app. If you haven't tried FanDuel Sportsbook yet, new users can place your first bet risk-free. That's right, new users get up to thousand dollars back in site credit if your first bet doesn't win. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today and use promo code Jansen so they know I sent you. That's promo code Jansen. FanDuel Sportsbook is the official partner of 97 on the ticket. Must be 21 or over in present Michigan. Minimum bet for 20. $5. Max bonus $35. First the online the site, then use the left three lanes to turn on to Northwestern Highway. Segment. That expires in seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanbull.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help. WWJ AM 950 Traffic Center. This report brought to you by Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Emergency crews are on the scene of an earlier accident, 75 southbound after Jocelyn. Only the right lane is open with backups from Baldwin. Drivers can re enter the freeway at Lapeer Road. The COVID vaccine is safe, effective, and trusted by experts. Find yours at Michigan.gov forward slash COVID vaccine or call 211. I'm Michelle Pena with traffic. 97 won the ticket. Would like to remind you that when you fix the ticket, take exit 14C onto M39 and Southfield Freeway. This is Homer Assize with an Odyssey Sports Credit sponsored by DoorDash. DoorDash makes back to school shopping easy. Download the DoorDash app today. Following Andrew Cuomo's resignation yesterday, New York State's governor designate Kathy Hochul will certainly have her hands full when she assumes office in two weeks. The 62-year-old former Congresswoman will not only be the Empire State's first ever.
full swing and DoorDash is making sure you get the most out of this time with your family. Back to school shopping should be easy and convenient and now it is with DoorDash. Get all of your essentials brought right to your door with one hour delivery. Shop healthy lunch options from your favorite grocery store and notebooks, pens, and pencils from your local Stay convenience in the left store. Two lanes. It's all just a tap away, all in one app. Simplify your summer and download uh -huh. the DoorDash app today. Heard you're buying a car. I brought my calculator. Dad, I already used Capital One Auto Navigator. I found my car online and got pre-qualified instantly. Instead of all that. You know those things impact your credit score. Didn't impact my credit score, Dad. Now I'm going to the dealership for a test drive and to make the purchase. Hmm, sounds too easy. No, it's just easy. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Terms and conditions apply. Find out more at CapitalOne.com slash Auto Navigator.
it is full go. It is me against you. It is the, 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 the Detroit Lions against it. They had New England come in. Right. They had the New York Giants come in early to, to practice. And you know it's it's mono first mono. And, you know, it's, it's going out there and making sure that it's pad level, it's speed, it's pop. It's getting the rhythm of full speed football drills. And then when those are done, you're done. And you're not going to be beating each other up because they don't, you know, New England or the Giants from, against the Lions, they want to make sure that they get to the preseason game, that they get to the regular season. But at some point, it's it's about building up that callus. It's about making sure that you have the right pad level, the right uh, the right rhythm, the right speed, the right steps, and, and delivering a blow. All of those and taking one, right? You you got to be able to take a hit. Some of those running backs right now, they're running. Dunder Swift is running through the hole, and he looks great, right? He's doing the Barry Sanders where he runs through. And then all of a sudden he ends up in the end zone every time. That's not realistic. That's not what happens. I think guys to the ground, which is a wrap up. And last night, if you watched Hard Knocks, you, you watched Ezekiel Elliott, who last year had a major issue with, with possession. You know, he fumbled the ball more than he than he has. So you watch what they're doing, and yeah, he's trying to focus on that, but when it's just guys that they're just swiping at the ball, it's different than actually somebody putting their helmet on the football and taking you to the ground. You don't get that in practice. You get that in some scrimmages, but you definitely get that in preseason games. So it'll be interesting to see how they manage you know, what's going on in, in the backfield uh, because you've got DeAndre Swift back there. you also got Jamal Williams. We'll get a chance to see you know, both of those guys and how they're going to work that one-two punch, that tandem of, of guys in the backfield. Jared Goff, obviously we'll get a chance to see him. I'm hoping that we see him get downfield at least take some shots downfield. And that's where because that's what we keep hearing is it's been a lot of short stuff. Hawkinson looks great. He should look great. But it's a lot of short stuff. And that's the one thing we start asking yourself is the offense got that extra gear. Can you go over the top and make that throw that you put your foot on somebody's neck and put the game away? And here in these preseason games is when you get a chance to try out something new because there's nothing at risk. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, injury risk, all that stuff, we talked about but that. But you throw an interception, I mean, yeah, yeah. who cares? Yeah, in, in another three weeks, they wipe the, wipe the slate clean. But if you don't do it at game speed, then you don't you don't want to be testing it out at, you know, with San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. It, it boasts his barren down your neck. Yeah, and this is where Penny Sewell, he's going to try some new things, and some of them are going to work, and they're going to be great tools in his tool chest throughout the season. Some of them won't. And he'll get a chance to say, you know what, I'm not going to try that against Bosa in the San Francisco right. 49 But hey, when we come back, there was an interesting question that, that was raised last night. Your phone, how many contacts do you have in it? And how many of them do you actually use? How many of them are old? And do you ever delete them? That's a good question. We'll get to that next. 97.1 The Ticket. WXYT FM and WXYT HD1 Detroit.
but of course she's still in my phone because who deletes phone contacts? Nobody, right? Like, do you guys ever go through and delete phone contacts? Because I have contacts in my phone of people I probably never even talked to. Or from, I've had the same phone number my entire life. So I could have phone numbers in here from, who knows, high school? Like it's, 